Hello and welcome back to Studio Euphemia. Today I'm going to show you how to make a de Stiel style painting in Photoshop. De Stiel is a Dutch art movement from the early 20th century that was defined by straight lines and the use of black and white and primary colors. It was also known as neoplasticism. So today we're going to be making a simple digital painting that looks a lot like the images that you can see here. So let's jump into Photoshop and get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is set up a new guide layout. So we're going up to the view menu and coming down to new guide layout. Clicking on that. And then we want to set the number of columns to six and the number of rows to six as well. We want to leave the gutter at zero in both cases, and we want to get rid of the margin. So if that's on, we'll click that off. Once we have that all set up, we'll click OK. And you can change the number of rows and columns to your liking, depending on what kind of image you want to make. But for our purposes today, we'll just do six and six. So we'll click OK. The next thing we're going to want to do is to head back into our view menu and this time scroll down to snap to and then select guides so click on that and that's going to help us with our very geometric image today as it's going to help snap the shapes we make to the grid that we've created so now that we have that set up we're going to come over here to our tool menu on the left and we're going to choose our shape tool if we click and hold on that, it shows us the options of the different shapes that we have available. We're going to choose the rectangle tool, so we'll click on that. And if we come up here to the top, we can see some options for our shape. We're wanting to create rectangles that have a fill color with no stroke, meaning there's no outline around our shape. So if we click on the fill icon, you can see it brings up our swatches. It also, if you click on this icon right here, it brings up our color picker so you can get really precise about the colors that you're picking. But since we're working with a really primary palette, we can just use our swatches here. So for our first color, I do want to use this bright primary red. So we've clicked on that. For stroke, we'll click on that icon and we'll make sure that we have this no stroke icon selected. And with that, we'll start dragging out our first shape. So as you can see, when I drag that out a bit, the edges where it was close to the grid, it kind of just snapped right in there, which was nice but it's still not quite fitting the grid the way I've drawn out our rectangle. So to fix that, I'm gonna hit Command T. And as you can see, that brings up our bounding box. Now we can play around with the dimensions. So I'm gonna hold Shift while I'm dragging down this bottom edge. It's clicked nicely into our grid. I'm going to do the same holding Shift while I drag in that outer corner. And I'm happy with that, so I'll hit Enter. Now we're going to move on to our next rectangle. So again, we'll come over to our tool menu and choose our rectangle shape. And we will drag out our next rectangle. I want to change the color of this one, so we'll come up here. I do want to point out that you can use the menu up at the top for these choices, or you can come into your properties panel and all of that information is available here on the right as well. So for the next rectangle, I want to change that color to blue. So I'm going to choose this bright primary blue here. And there we have it. We have a new blue shape. So I'm going to drag this over to the edge. And as you can see, the shape is not properly aligned with our grid. So I'll hit Command T. Again, holding Shift as I drag in and up to snap to our grid 
and I'm happy with that. So I'll click on the Move tool to click out of that shape. And we'll move on to our next rectangle, choosing our Rectangle Shape tool. And we'll just start dragging it out. This one, I want to choose our next color, which is this bright primary yellow. So we'll click on that. Again, I'm going to want to transform this shape by hitting Command T and holding the Shift button while I drag out to resize it. I think I'm going to move this shape up into the top right corner with our Move tool. We'll carry on with another rectangle. I'm going to change the color of this. I think we'll use red again for this. Really just making this up as I go along. I'm going to want to change the size of this red rectangle, so I'll hit Command T, holding Shift as I drag in and drag up to fit our composition. And moving on to our next rectangle. This one, I think I'll choose yellow again. And I'm going to move this here, hitting Command T. I think I'll do this with that shape. Choosing another rectangle tool. I'm going to do a more horizontally oblong shape. This time I'm going to change that to our primary blue color. Using the Move tool, I'm going to drag that over, hit Command T. Just drag that in to fit our composition, hit Enter. And again, coming back to our Rectangle tool, dragging out another shape. And I want you to notice that each time we draw a new rectangle, it's placing it on a new layer, which is exactly what we want. Because that gives us the freedom to move around the forms separately. They're not all on one layer. So for this blue shape, I think I'll drag it down here and hit Command T to resize that. Holding Shift as I drag it over. To zoom out a bit to drag in that lower edge. And I'm going to hit Enter. So I think now we'll do another, yet another rectangle. Drag this out. This time I think we're going to use a light gray color. De Steel really was about black and white and primaries, but they did use a bit of gray in their compositions. I think it's a nice touch to just break up the monotony of all of these primary and black and white colors. So we'll hit Command T, holding Shift as I resize this. And I'm going to do another rectangle. I'm going to change that color to red using the Move tool and then hitting Command T. Drag that up. Okay. And we are wanting to leave some white for the background. So the next step, we'll go ahead and start putting in some of our lines. So to do that, we're going to create a new layer. So we'll come over to our Layers panel, 
click on add new layer and then we're going to come back over to our tool menu on the left to our shape tool and instead of the rectangle we're going to choose our line tool and similarly to our rectangle we're going to want to pay attention to our fill and stroke options we're wanting to choose a fill which is going to be black because we want black lines so we'll click on this black swatch here we also want to make sure that again there is no stroke so we'll choose that and then we'll start dragging out our line across our composition now i'll click on our move tool and at this point i'm going to just hide our guide layouts so we can have a, a better view of what we're doing with the lines at this point so i'm coming up to view and choosing clear canvas guides clicking on that and as you can see that's gotten rid of our guides now so we can see a bit more clearly what we're doing at this point now this black line that we've just made it's labeled shape one on our new layer I'm thinking this is a bit thin for what we want for our composition. We want kind of thick black lines. So to change that, while this layer is selected in our layers panel, just hit the keyboard letter A. I'm on a Mac again. And that brings up our shape options again for us to adjust anything we want to adjust. The width we have is basically the width that we've dragged it out across our canvas which is fine the height though is how we can make this appear to be a bit thicker so i'm going to change the height of this line to let's say 15 and i'll hit enter and as you can see that's a little bit thicker i'm thinking maybe even a little bit thicker is going to work better so again with that layer selected i'm hitting a on my keyboard and we've brought up our options to change things up at the top so again i'm going to change the height of our line let's try 20 and see that might be a bit thick but we'll hit enter and yeah i think that looks good so now we're going to want to place lines across our composition so to do that, we're going to click on that layer and hit Command J, and that's going to duplicate that layer. Now we're going to hit Command T with that new copy selected in our layers panel. And that's going to allow us to move that copy wherever we want in our composition. So I'm going to drag that up about here and click Enter. I want to again make another copy of that line so I'll hit command J and then command T and now we have another line that we can move and when we're seeing that little purple line pop up that's Photoshop helping us place our line correctly in alignment with the shapes that we've already created which is really helpful now I'm thinking I want to add some vertical black lines to our composition. So to do that, again, I'm going to click on this top layer, hit Command J, and then Command T. That will highlight the copy for us. Now we want to hover at the edge here. And when we see this little icon with the two arrows in a semicircle, that lets us know we can now adjust the angle of our line. We want it at a perfect 90 degree angle. So there we go. And now we can move our new line where we want it. And as you can see, it's a bit short for the vertical part of our composition. So to change that, we're going to zoom in. We'll hover over the end here. And as soon as we see those vertical arrows, we can make an adjustment. So again, I'm holding shift as I do this. So it only adjusts the length and not the width of our line. And I'm dragging it down so that it fits 
across our entire composition. I want to create another vertical line. So again, I'll hit Command J and then Command T. Now it's made a copy of that vertical line that now I can move where I want it in our composition. Again, paying attention to when that purple line shows up to know the best place to put it and hitting enter. So that's looking pretty good so far. I'm thinking it needs a bit of texture though to kind of mimic the the steel style of these are actually paintings on canvas. So I'm going to bring in a layer of texture to our work now. So to do that, I'm going to pull in an image that I found on unsplash.com. I literally just went to the website, typed in texture canvas or canvas texture, found this great kind of dark linen canvas image. And I've just dragged that in. And now I'm going to size it up so it fills our entire composition. So I'm just dragging our bounding boxes. And then once I'm happy with that placement, kind of drag it around. I'm liking that kind of extra texture bit in the middle there. So once I'm happy with the placement, I'll hit enter. Now what we're going to want to do so that this doesn't obliterate everything we've done, but rather interact with it is change our blending mode. So we'll come over here to our blending mode drop down menu, making sure that top layer is selected, our texture layer. And now we're just going to scroll through and see what works with the rest of our image. Darken and multiply are a little bit too dark. We can try this. Let's try multiply. And then maybe bringing the opacity of that layer down quite a bit. That's kind of nice, but it does darken our image quite a bit. So we'll try some other options. Color burn really vivifies the whole thing, which is kind of a nice effect. Linear burn, no. So as you can see, depending on what blending mode we choose, it gives quite a different effect to our image. And it's really interesting to see how the blending modes interact with each of the colors, especially that little gray square in the top. Because it's kind of a middle gray, it's really giving a quite a different effect from all of the primary colors. I'm thinking I like screen because it's really letting that canvas texture show through without dulling down our colors too much. So I'm going to choose that, but then I'm going to bring the opacity on that down a little bit to just make it a bit more subtle. We don't want the canvas texture to really overwhelm our image. We just want that subtle imperfection of a true painted canvas, that feeling to come through. So I think if we bring our opacity down to around 50%. That works quite nicely. So I'll zoom in a bit so you can see that. Really gives us that painting on a canvas effect. So that is essentially it. Um, you can really play around with this formula and create really interesting images just based on those few simple steps. So I hope you really enjoyed this and learned some tips and tricks for your own project. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time. <laughs>